Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about learning assessment techniques. Um, so there's something called a performance curve, also referred to as a learning curve. And it's a line graph, like you see in the picture here, uh, that is showing the performance on which the level of achievement of performance measure is plotted for a specific sequence of time or trials. Um, so across the bottom would be time or tr different trials or tests. Um, and then on the y-axis would be the performance measure. Now, which direction the curve goes, it could be in an upward direction or in a downward direction, depending on the performance measure. Uh, because like maybe reaction time is the performance measure, then if it's in the downward direction, that's an improvement because shorter reaction time is better. Um, so, or if the performance measure is speed, then we might want that to go in the upward direction because faster speed is better. Um, so we can't tell from the direction of the curve whether it's an improvement or not. It depends on what the performance measure is. Um, so there's four different types of performance curves that we'll generally see. A uh, linear curve indicates that there's a propor proportional performance increase over time. So that's like this one in the bottom left here. A negatively accelerated curve is this one in the top left, looks like that, uh, where we have a lot of improvement really quickly and then smaller amounts of improvement later on. Uh, this is the most common type of curve that you see in motor skill learning. A uh, positively accelerated curve is kind of the opposite, where we have a slower performance gain in the beginning and then a steeper increase later on. Um, and then the last one down here in the bottom right is an S-shaped curve that's a combination of all the other three types of curves. Um, so retention tests examine the persistence characteristics of learning. Uh, in, the pre in the previous video, I talked about the different characteristics and we talked about persistence. So retention test is seeing if the degree or it's, it's trying to test the degree of permanence or persistence of the performance level uh, that you achieve during practice. Um, so you would take maybe a, a pre-test or like a starting test, and then after there's been practice or rehearsal um, or studying, it depends what type of, of skill it is, and then you take a test later on, we're seeing if there's a difference, and that's a retention test. Um, now, importantly, there needs to be time between the practicing and learning of the skill before there is the retention test. Um, like, for example, let's say we're talking about academics and we're talking about learning information, um, like cognitive information. So let's say we're having a class and I teach you all this information and then give you a quiz at the very end. That's not a retention test because we're kind of still in the middle of what we'd call a practice session. Uh, we are still taking in that information. So it's not really a test of what you've retained because there hasn't really been an interval between where you gained the information and where you had to demonstrate that you retained it. Um, compared to if you come in for class the next day or next week and you have a quiz on that same information, now it's truly testing your retention uh, because there was a period of time, there was a retention interval between the taking in of that information and the storing of the information and the test of whether you retained it or not. Transfer tests examine the adaptability characteristic of learning. Um, so that involves a novel situation where you have to adapt your performance of the skill that you've been learning. Um, and you have to adapt to the new characteristics of the situation. So there's two variations. It can be a novel context or a novel variation of the skill. So maybe it's the exact same skill you have been practicing, but now you have to do it in a new context, under new conditions. Um, so maybe previously you were getting augmented feedback as you practice this skill. And now for this test, you are doing the exact same thing in the same place, in the same way, but you're not receiving feedback. So that's an example of a novel context. Um, or you could be in a completely different physical environment, completing the exact same skill. Um, or you could have different personal characteristics, like your state of fatigue or alertness, uh, or you had a cup of coffee first, or normally you don't. So some kind of novel context, um, something new about the situation in which you're completing the same exact skill. 
A novel variation of the skill means that it's the same skill, but some kind of variation of it. Um, so like could be drinking from a cup and maybe you're, you're pretty good at drinking from a certain cup. And now if I give you a, a jug to drink out of, or a completely different type of receptacle, it's the same skill essentially. Um, but it's a new variation of the skill because it's a little different, uh, or walking at different speeds over different terrains or some kind of change to, um, the requirements of the skill that make it a little bit different. Okay, a dual task procedure uh, is where we would have somebody do two or more tasks simultaneously and see how they perform in the different tasks. Um, so it examines the attention demands of a task. Um, so again, the more experienced and skilled we get, the more learning takes place, the less attention we have to um, still maintain on that task that we're learning. So it's like in the beginning, if somebody's first learning how to play tennis and they're learning the basics of how to do the different swings and the footwork and things, um, they might have to pay full attention to getting the footwork right and to getting the hand positioning right and getting the, the angles of the limbs in the right place and that sort of thing. Uh, but with expertise and practice, that person won't have to pay attention to those things. They'll be able to do it without really thinking about it and paying that attention, they could have a full conversation or be shouting back and forth to the coach while they're still successfully playing tennis. Um, and so the attention demands of the task have changed because learning took place and they're now at a higher skill level. Okay, practice performance may rep misrepresent learning. So we have to keep in mind that like just because someone performs really well or maybe more poorly than you expected does not necessarily reflect how much learning has taken place. So there are certain things that can interfere with performance that could cause performance to misrepresent how much learning has taken place. Um, now we can overcome that by uh, using retention and transfer tests that um, help us see whether a performance variable could be what's getting in the way. So a retention or transfer test tends to uncover that and, and kind of wash away those performance variables a bit. Um, practice performance can also be misleading if it involves plateaus. Um, so performance plateaus in all sorts of skills and all sorts of contexts are normal. They happen all the time, um, but they are temporary and they are a problem with performance. So it's a plateau of performance, not a plateau of learning. Um, so plateaus can happen um, because essentially, like if we're learning a skill and we're increasing in our ability to complete that skill, and we might be transitioning between strategies for completing that skill, like we're learning a new way to do something because our skill level has increased to a point where now we're acknowledging certain aspects of the skill that need more attention. Um, so we might plateau in our performance while we're still kind of working out that skill. So we're still in the process of learning and learning a lot in very meaningful ways, uh, but our performance might not reflect that until we get that new strategy in place and kind of get past that new transition that we're working on learning. Um, plateaus could also represent um, a period of poor motivation, fatigue, or lack of attention directed to a specific aspect of the skill. Again, that does not mean that learning isn't taking place. It just means that those are certain variables that might be causing a performance plateau. So performance might not necessarily be improving um, for a brief period of time, and it's temporary and based on the state of the person as they are continuing to perform. Um, and then finally, a plateau could appear to be occurring because of limitations by the performance measure itself. So it could be that the person's capability is improving and learning is taking place. But if you're using a test that has a really strong ceiling or floor effect, um, meaning that the test or the instrument um, has a maximum score or a minimum score, depending on which direction we're aiming for. Um, if there's a strong 
uh, ceiling or floor to how well you can perform, then it's not going to know when more improvement has taken place. So it would appear to be a plateau, but it's, it's not real. That's not a real plateau. It just means that the way you're observing the improvement is limited and you've kind of reached the maximum or the minimum and can't go any further. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.